Hello and welcome to an online presentation of outdoor painting in Pickering, Ontario. 2020 has been a difficult year for everyone. Through all the challenges, many people have rediscovered the important role our nature, our natural environment plays in the health of our communities and ourselves. Most of us are banned from participating in public gatherings now. Many people have taken to the parks and trails in our neighborhoods to find connection. In doing so, we rediscovered the community of nature and how it can sustain and uplift us through difficult times. Nature has the ability to bring us together, to raise our spirits, and to teach us about ourselves and our precious earth. During this video, I'll be demonstrating a plein air outdoor painting of the beautiful Pickering Beach Point Promenade. I picked an unseasonably warm day in November to sit down and begin this art. It was a little bit windy coming off the lake, but I did have enough layers to keep myself warm while I painted. The first step is to find something that inspires you, and I was very much inspired by this beautiful tree that overhangs the beach. Once I got set up, I began to sketch in the tree and the beach and the shoreline. Just using some basic raw umber, which is a light brown oil paint that I've thinned out using walnut oil. In my practice, I prefer not to use any solvents, so I don't use Varsol or Taltine or any of those harsh chemicals with my oil paints. And the oil paints that I use are walnut oil paints, which have a very low odor. As you can see, the sky was beautiful and blue that day. And the sun was about 10 o'clock in the morning, and so the sun was just at that perfect angle, bouncing off the lake and streaming through the trees. When you're play painting on location with oil paint, and you have to do the entire painting in one sitting, it's always a good idea not to go too thick right away with your paint. We started off nice and light with the sky, blocking in the colors. I like to vary the brush strokes as I go. And I also change up the color because, you know, if you look at the sky really carefully, it's not a solid color. There's lots of different gradients and shading in there little wisps of cloud, sun bouncing off the cloud. When I'm adding the sky to this particular painting, I'm actually putting it in the negative space in between the branches. I've laid out the major branches in this painting and now I'm working in between in the negative spaces lying out my colors of the sky. Today I'm using cobalt blue and white for the sky. Normally on a sunny day like today when you look at the sky it's lighter, closer to the horizon line, which is closest to the ground, and darker as you look up into the atmosphere. So in my painting, in order for me to indicate to the viewer that things are further away in the sky, 
the lowest part of the sky is lighter and the top part of the sky is darker. Of course, if you were painting a storm, this might change because sometimes in a storm, the dark clouds lie very close to the earth. And so the darkest area is going to be below and the lightest area will be above where the sun is. It's always best when you're doing plein air painting to basically just observe what's around you. Don't paint from your memory, paint from what you see. Even when you're out in nature and you're just walking around, observe what you see. Take your time and smell the roses as they say and stop and take a look at that really interesting tree or that really cool moss growing on the ground. Nature has so many interesting things that it can show us. When we create artwork, you can certainly create artwork from memory, but your memory is always going to default to a particular shape. If you really want to challenge yourself when you're creating art, really look at what it is that you're trying to paint and paint from life. Paint the shapes, paint the shadows, paint the light. Paint what you see and not what you think you see. Well, nature calls us to be outdoors these days. Always remember to practice social distancing and COVID safety protocols when you are visiting any public spaces, even outdoors and respect nature. You're visiting someone else's home. There's a lot of animals and insects and things that you don't see that live there. Have respect for that. At this point in the painting, I'm adding in some of the highlights. I tend to do things differently almost every time I paint. A couple reasons. One, because I like to explore different ways of doing things. And two, because when you try new things or the same thing in different ways, that's when you make discoveries. And so today I'm using the lighter colors in the water to mark out the lighter colors of the waves. And then I will progress to the darker colors as I go. You can certainly do however works for you. But I find when you're painting something such as water where sometimes it's really hard to see the differences in the shapes, that it's better to pick something that really stands out such as either the very darkest darks or the very lightest light colors and paint that in first it sort of gives you a starting point
we start to layer in the darker colors, you can see that I'm changing up my brush strokes. When you're creating something like this, uh, a painting, don't think of it as if you were painting a wall, but instead consider each brush stroke to be an individual unit, creating an individual shape on your canvas. I'm using canvas paper for this particular artwork. I like it because it's very light to carry around, especially for when you're painting outdoors and you need to pack a lot of things. Um, in this case, what I've done, as you can see, is I've prepped the, um, the canvas paper. I've painted it with a pink colored gesso to just to coat the paper two reasons one because it shows up really well on camera and the other because when you've painted that white surface a color suddenly it be doesn't become as scary sometimes uh, artists feel a little bit paralyzed when they look at a white canvas so it really helps if you just paint in a solid dark color or light color or whatever color you want in that back area uh, let it dry and then it gives you a base to start with. I've also mounted the paper onto a board. It's just basically a, a cardboard piece that I had sitting around the studio and I've taped it up with some painter's tape and uh, this will give me a nice clean edge around the outside and it also secures it to the board and makes it nice and easy to snap on to my easel here. We're going to do a little bit of fast forwarding um, of the water so that we can get to the next portion. If you're painting along you can certainly pause at this point and finish off your water and then continue when you're ready with the next section. With the water just about finished, we're moving on to that distant piece of the shoreline, which actually I found out is the uh, part of the Scarborough Bluffs off in the distance, which is pretty cool. That day when I was sitting there, I could see atop the bluffs, the, uh, the autumn trees with their beautiful uh, yellow and gold and orange colors. So I definitely wanted to include that in the artwork. The trick is not to make that section too bright because anything that is really bright is going to look like it's closer to the viewer. And that section is actually further in the distance. So we want it to have color but we want it to be more of a muted color. So it gets to be a little bit tricky that you want to show distance, but you also want to show the brilliance. And you're just adding in some of the white of the rock face. The sun is reflecting off that rock face and it's making it uh, one of the more brilliant colors on the horizon. This 
adding in a little bit more of the waves Sometimes I do jump around and something catches my eye while I'm doing another part of the painting. I'll go back to it. At this point what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of the yellow that I'm using in that far background into the water. Whenever you introduce a color into your artwork, you don't want to have it just in one central location. You want to spread it through a few different points in your composition. And what that does is it helps the viewer's eye move around your composition. As you can see, I'm sort of using that very top edge corner of the brush to dot in some of that golden, orange, bronzy color of the trees. And I'm not actually drawing what we think we know is a tree. Because if you ever looked in the distance and observed what you actually see, what you're seeing in the distance are dots. You're not actually seeing branches with individual leaves on them from that distance away. It's not possible to see something that well, unless of course you're using binoculars. Our brains know from our own experience that those are trees. And so our brain, when we view it, is going to fill in that information. But as the artist, you don't need to draw in a half-inch tall tree. And that's the difference between painting from real life and painting from a photograph. Often a photograph, especially digital photographs, will put everything into sharp focus. And when we paint from that, it's actually giving us a false view of what we, with our human eyes, can really see. Now I'm just adding in some of the darker areas that you see inside and underneath a tree. The sun doesn't get to the bottom of a tree, and so below a tree is going to be darker. And inside, closer to the trunk of the tree, is going to be darker, because it's harder for the sun to get in there. It's being blocked by branches and leaves. At this point, I'm just going across the horizon line. I wanted to lighten it up a little bit more. Now, I waited a little bit because I wanted the paint to set to dry a bit, although oil paint does take quite a while to dry. If you do let it sit, even for a few minutes, it will dry a little bit more than you can put another layer over top. This is the also another trick when you're painting outside and you're painting everything in one sitting with oil is not to go too thick with your paint. If you go too thick, it's going to be too hard to lay color on top of color and you're just going to get frustrated. You're going to have a lot of muddy colors blending together and uh, it's just really hard to work with always better to start with a very thin layer and as you go on top the layers progressively get thicker. was such a beautiful day to sit and do this 
even though you can see, like I said, the wind was a little bit brutal. The sun was warm, so the balance between the cooler air coming off the lake and the warm sun was just perfect. Being on that beach point promenade in Pickering, Ontario was certainly a real treat. And I'm definitely going back again to do, uh, do some more work. It was wonderful. We're just working on the tree right now. And I use what's known as a limited palette. So I'm using the same raw umber that I started with when I sketched in the initial lines of the um, composition. Only now it's not quite as sketchy. I'm doing it a little bit darker and I've added in a tiny bit of white to vary the darkness, the lightness, and to get that feel of the, um, the tree bark. I love painting trees. To me, it's like painting portraits of people. Every single tree that I see is different from the next one. Trees are just as, as unique and individual as us human beings. needed to hold on to the canvas at this point. The wind was picking up and the canvas was moving around too much for me to do that far right edge. The easel that I'm using is a completely folding easel. It's very lightweight and it's definitely an ideal tool to have if you're going to be doing any outdoor painting. It folds up and it fits right inside a uh, backpack, which makes it great if you decide that you want to trek into a forest for a little while and find yourself a nice spot, which I've done several times over the years. As you can see, I'm building the tree gradually darker. You don't want to go too dark too quickly. With oil paint, like I said, because oil paint takes a long time to dry, several days to several weeks, you don't want to start off really dark. It's a lot harder to go lighter once you've got it too dark than it is to go darker if it's too light. So start off lighter and start off with thin paint, which you can, if you're not using um, Tultine or Varsol, like I, I recommend you don't use, um, thin it out with your walnut oil or your linseed oil. Start off with a thin paint and then gradually build heavier layers on top. Oil painting is not difficult at all. I prefer the medium because the colors are so brilliant. They shine. And I love just being able to push and pull that paint around. The long drying time to me is actually a bonus because that means that I can go back in and move things around and change things really easily. It's all in what you get used to. If you've never tried oil paint, 
I encourage you to give it a try. Most of the arts and crafts supply stores do have small kits that you can try that include your basic primary colors and usually a black and a white or even if there is no black you don't actually need black as long as you've got a white in your three primaries you're all set and some people feel that they don't do oil paint because it's too expensive as well but really the tube itself is more expensive than acrylic however it does last a lot longer a little bit of oil paint can go a very long way so for me there's really no difference in cost it's more of a preference in in the feel of the paint itself We're working on the beach area right now and as we did with the water I'm starting with the lighter areas and this time I've decided to start with more of the lemony yellow areas and I'm pushing it into the water because at the water's edge as we all know when you walk along the beach and you stare in at the water it's almost translucent that you can see through the water down into that sand and so if you blend in your sand with that water's edge on your painting, it will give you that effect. And again, I'm using the same yellow that I've used in that far background, the highlight of the rocks in the distance, the highlight on the tree to the right, and now we've got highlights on the water and on the beach. we're adding in some of the dark of the footprints and again because the style that I use is not realism it's more of an impressionistic style I'm not getting really concerned about drawing each individual footprint exactly as a footprint we're putting in marks with our colors to indicate that there's footprints. And now I'm putting in the marks of the shadow of the tree branches. You can see here the shadow of the tree. The sun is actually off to my left shoulder, just above the water. It's still fairly early in the morning. So you can see the colors that I have in the sand. They're basically what I'm mixing on my palette is a combination of the brown of the raw umber. I'm adding white to lighten it up. I'm adding a little bit of red for that pink sheen that the sand in uh, Lake Ontario has. And then I'm adding a little bit of yellow just to take off too much of the redness. 
and then we'll blot that in in various shades and add in the colors of the shadows and yes shadows have colors shadows are not all black in fact shadows should never be black shadows are basically objects that have less light shining on them so when you're mixing colors for your shadows you can take the same color that you used for that object and just darken it down a little bit and I like to use a mix of a blue for a cooler shadow and some of the brown for warmer shadows and I mix that into the color that I used for the actual object and that will give me my shadow area getting really close to finishing off our painting today basically at this stage you want to take your time and step back from the painting every so often and take a look at the balance in your colors where your shadows are where your highlights are and sometimes if you feel that there's not enough light white can only be white white can't be whiter than white so if you want a light area to look super bright darken up the dark areas that are around it just as i'm doing right now i'm darkening in those shadows and as soon as i do that it makes those other colors around it look so much brighter Like I said, you can't make white any whiter than white. White is white. But you can make it appear lighter and brighter when you put a darker color beside it. And it's that contrast that can really make a difference in your work. I just want to give a special shout out and thank you to the City of Pickering Community Services Department and especially Cultural Services whose support and vision made this project possible. Thanks so much for this wonderful opportunity and I hope everyone enjoyed the workshop. Bye for now.